Hello everyone, Mr. Happy here, and welcome back to another part of Let's Play Final Fantasy XIV. I know it's been a while, I know I said I really didn't feel like doing this series anymore, but you know what? I sat down at my computer today and I went, you know what? I feel like playing Healer Happy today. So, what the hell, why not? I'll record another one, we'll see how it goes. And in this video, I actually forgot I left off on a pretty good note. My next video was supposed to be me doing Samal in the Duty Finder. So, Samal is the second dungeon you'll encounter here in Heaven's Ward. It is part of the main story, the first official dungeon that's part of the main story. Though, like I said with Dusk Vigil, odds are you're not going to actually skip that one. So, with that in mind, it is actually, in my opinion, one of the harder leveling dungeons, especially because some tanks like to do a crazy hard pull in the very first parts. So, as a healer, you're really going to need to be prepared for that part. Uh, I'll go over what can happen, and we'll see what actually does happen, and hopefully we'll get somewhere in between in the results that we're looking for. So less than 5 minute queue time is what we're expecting, but you guys know how this works. I am going to go quiet until that queue actually pops, so I'll edit that part out, and I'll see you guys when the dungeon pops. Alright, there we go. Now let's head into the dungeon. Only took me a couple of minutes to get a, a queue for this. Now, apologies. I probably should have apologized for this uh, before I actually queued in. I have been a little bit sick, and on top of that, I lost my voice a few days ago, so I'm still in the process of getting it back. Apologies in advance if <clears throat> I sound like an idiot or you hear me clearing my throat from time to time. All right, so, Samal. Good dungeon. All right, let's get this underway. Alright, let's see if I can remember most of my buttons. I'm not gonna lie, I'm kinda going in, and I didn't re-familiarize myself with my buttons very much. I can see some of the basics. Uh, Alright, so he's doing regular pulls, which means I'll actually get to do quite a lot here. So, sometimes right here at the beginning, it's pretty common for, uh, for, su for some tanks to literally just pull this and the next pack, and it's a lot, a lot of damage. So it can be a little bit harder to pull off. Um some DPS in between healing here. Luckily, this guy did not do any such thing. So, I'm gonna save my Asylum for the next pull, though. And so, we can just arrow 2, arrow 1, and get some Stone 3 spam. Stone 3 does a lot of damage at the point that you get it, so... It's a huge contribution to your damage output. And you know me, I like to throw down Stone Skins whenever I can. Uh, between pulls. Good, his regen is off. So the big thing with this dungeon right here is, see that Drake Spur? And how that Dragoon just jumped right to it? Uh, you actually want to kill these things first, because those po those pollen clusters that are giving the tank poison stacks right now, uh, those actually... Uh, I'm looking for a Suna on my bar. There it is. Those actually um, just keep spawning as long as the Drake Spur is alive. So, I like to kill them as quick as possible. Now, if I recall, my gear isn't actually very good at this point, so I'm kinda gonna be, um, kinda doing just less than I want to. I also am still trying to remember, there it is. Still just trying to remember where some of my buttons are, too, so I'll probably take the DPSing a little bit slow. And watch his health a little bit more in this dungeon. Has been a while since I've played Final Fantasy XIV with a controller. And just Healer Happy's hot bars are just... I actually still really like my setup here. It, it, it feels pretty easy to come back to, even after all this time. Alright, so we're going to give him a cure one, and then start casting the next stone skin on him. I only have one ether too. It's another thing to keep in mind. I don't even know why I bother with that focus target. The, the party, my party list uh, is pretty close. So this is another part where this can get pretty rough. Looks like he's actually going to go for a full pull here. Well, it's hard to tell, actually. No, he's doing uh, he's doing a half pull. So, same deal. Uh, sometimes groups pull the entire set right here. And sometimes they uh, sometimes they don't. Sometimes they just do the first Drake Spur in, these, in this pull, and then sometimes they do just the whole thing, and it gets kind of crazy. Uh, it doesn't really matter which one you do. Um, it's no rush, really. This, this pull could get pretty rough if you try and do it the, like, crazy way. So, I'll just throw a few holies out here. I'll throw three holies, and then I'll give him a kill one. I'll spam a few cure ones on him. Try to get a free cure proc. I haven't had much luck with free cure proc so far. Yeah, whatever. 
Yeah, I didn't have any luck with free cure procs. Not even just little luck. I don't think I've had a single free cure proc yet this dungeon. I probably missed their free cure proc earlier, actually. Alright. I watched my MP. Oh, we all went off the other target. Good job, us. Get that stone skin. He'll probably lose a hit from that stone skin, but it's okay. And then one more set of pollen clusters, and we are good to go. Help him out with those. And our party just instantly knew what to do. I don't mind this pace for this dungeon. Like, sometimes I'm like, oh, you know, we're doing it this way, or whatever, you know. Like, no, I don't mind for this dungeon. I don't know why I did that. Oh, I know what I wanted to do. I want to get rid of this damn poison. Have I still not gotten a free cure proc? Jesus. I don't think I have. That's right. I could throw out maybe two holies here, and then I'll probably just chill a little bit. I'm actually not trying to do the whole Benny trick thing that I usually do, because I don't remember where Benny is on my bar, so <laughs> I don't want <laughs> I don't want to do it while I'm still like remembering buttons. Where do I have Benny? Oh, it's uh, right there. It's uh, okay. I see it. It's alright. I'm not worried about MP here. It was pretty calculated. And this next boss is also really easy on MP. I went a little bit too ham there with the Cure 2s. He doesn't have to wait for me. He's he's doing the right thing, though, waiting for me. Uh, in your general duty finder, I would wait. He doesn't really have to, though. I'll pop this ether that I have. I'm good. I'm ready whenever. Yeah, he just typed out healer MP. I don't need full MP. Like, generally around half is okay for me. Now, another thing I don't... There it is. Presence of Mind. I was going to say, I don't remember where Presence of Mind is, so... Look at that deeps. Now, the big thing with this boss is, if you do it correctly, he goes into this phase where he summons a ton of bees. And what some groups will do is they'll actually go out of their way to try and kill all the bees. Um, if the bee reaches the middle, he eats it and does a bunch of AoE damage. The other thing that he does is he sucks a player in from a random direction. He'll also suck in any bees. And if you get hit by that AoE or if one of the uh, bees gets eaten by, the hornets get eaten by that AoE, then he'll do that. He'll spit them out and then he'll do the AoE. The bees he doesn't actually spit out. He just devours them. You'll see it happen here. What you can actually do is just outright ignore the bees, because the AoE damage that he does is really insignificant. Like here, I'll just throw out a single Medica 2. He's also not auto-attacking at all this entire time. So what you do is you just burn him down. And if you do this, then he actually will just immediately go into this phase again, and he'll pretty much just never auto-attack the entire fight. Making it a super, super easy fight. Where there's almost... Oh, someone got eaten, but that's fine. And he also gets um, stacks, damage stacks when he eats someone. So he got five damage stacks. Not a big deal, though, because he's going to immediately go into that attack again. And the fight's over. You know what I mean? Very, very simple fight. Let's see what kind of loot we got. Nothing for me. Nothing for me. That's fine. Really, really simple boss fight. Now, if you decide to do it the old school way where you kill the bees, it is, like, I guess, safer... I guess, maybe not even really, because you might have to deal with some more auto attacks and more special attacks. He does a bunch of AoEs and whatnot that you just dodge. It's nothing crazy outside of that. Oh, pff, hi Kafka. <laughs> Sorry about that. I, uh, I streamed before this, so that was just my uh, follow notification going off. It's alright. People watching this don't really mind a Kefka laugh, do they? Another place where some you have... Uh, divergence and strategy some people will pull all the enemies you see those drakes at the end there when we walk over there they're actually going to summon a daddy dragon who's going to shoot who's going to pick a target and shoot three fire puddles at them so uh if you can actually outrange the fire puddles if you pull those two drakes back to where we are now um 
it's actually possible to just have the big Drake. He'll just shoot the three fire puddles, but he won't actually be able to reach you with them. We'll be doing it the, the old school way, where you actually just treat it pretty normally. DPS in this group's also pretty good. That was a really early stone skin. I'll do another one. That was a really early stone skin. You'll see it in a second here. Also, I should be eating food for the EXP. I don't really need the EXP all that much, but... So you can see Daddy Drake. Now he picked that person. He's going to shoot them with all three. Oh, he's, oh, so actually the tank wants to pull all three of the dragon... Wants to pull all the dragons back here. But you can see he can't actually reach. So he's just shooting the fireballs up there at this point. Because he can't do anything else with them. So it looks really strange because he just shoots them in like a random direction. And then he's going to land... And if we're, since we're all the way back here, he won't aggro us. So uh, we could just deal with these guys without having to deal with the big Drake. This is the super safe strat. A lot of groups don't care to do it this way. They'll just pull all four mobs into there, dodge the fire, and then pick up the big dragon. This tank's playing it safe, though. Nothing wrong with that. It is the duty finder after all, so better safe than sorry. He, uh, he aggroes from pretty far, though, as you can see. It's so, like, I tried to get a little closer to him. This dragon will also fly away at 50% HP, so he doesn't even really take that long to deal with. He's just a standard dragon. Doesn't do anything it's too special. See? Flies away at 50%. No biggie. Same deal here. Uh, some groups choose to pull both of these mobs all the way up. And then group everything up and AOE it. And this guy will probably do it the, the super safe way where we just fight them back here. Alright, I'll use my presence of mind. Might as well just use it to try and clear the dungeon a little faster. Should really be regening him before I DPS because then sometimes I have to stop and do that. It's a little bit of a waste for me to uh, stop and regen with a spell speed buff. So were those dots, though. Those dots were also a waste. He's probably going to do the same thing. Pull the dragons back, I imagine. Or pull them back here away from the dragon. This spot, it doesn't matter as much whether or not you do that. It looks like, yeah, he's going to do that. Okay. I'll wait till he gets one AoE off, and then... Ugh, I forgot about that with controller. So obnoxious. Where you have to um, let go of the trigger before you can actually place a skill. Ugh. That's one move that these guys do that's really fucking annoying is Flash Flood. Uh, not Flash Flood, it's um, the other skill. Let me see if I get the name right here. They have one AoE skill, it's like Aqua Ball or something, where they shoot a giant AoE vulnerability, and it's it's just obnoxious. So what usually happens if you fight these guys up there, you see a bunch of glacier sprites and a bunch of uh, a bunch of ice pillars that just disappear. Uh, they'll just basically walk up to you and explode. They're gonna basically just do that all at once right here. Like as we walk up, they're all gonna walk up and try to explode on us. And you just don't get hit by them. Like even if you get hit by a glacier sprite, it's not the end of the world. But you see, like he's just. Yeah. And then they all blow up. You don't get hit by them and you're done. They don't even give you XP. Like, that's that's how low impact they are. Oof, he took that one to the face. And we basically have just two more enemies, and then we can uh, lock the boss out now. These two enemies, uh, while they're the last ones before the boss, you may remember me mentioning from some of the earlier dungeons that sometimes people like to drag enemies to the boss chamber and then lock them out by pulling the boss. These enemies, sometimes groups do that. Uh, it's not completely out of the question. Uh, but it's less common here than it is in other dungeons. It's more common to just kill these two enemies. There are some times where it's just not worth it. Locking two enemies out is like, eh. I guess that we did it in Brave Flock, so you could argue that it's so few enemies it's easier to lock out as well. I'll just do arrow two and then stone three spam this guy. Well, there's my free cure proc, by the way. <laughs> Guess I'll just use it for no reason. And 
we're good. Alright, second boss. Moving pretty quick through this dungeon. Alright, so the second boss, Meoth, pretty simple. He hits the tank pretty hard. So, if you're a tank, you can get away without using your tank stance here after you generate enmity, but... Let, let, okay, well, you can get away with it a lot on this boss. The last boss, the first boss, you can pretty much stay in DPS stance the entire time because of the fact he never auto-attacks. This guy kind of does that, um, but he, he, he attacks more, so and he hits pretty hard. So there are, again, two varied strategies for this boss. Um, I'll go over them after we get started. So he's got a few cleaves. He's got a few conal attacks that he can do. They both hit pretty hard. Say. Remember when I said? I just said it too. Why? Why am I like? Ugh, I just wasted so much of that spell speed buff. All right. So then he's gonna eventually do this primordial roar thing, which does a bit of AOE damage. But the big thing it does is it summons four slimes. There's two red ones and two, I guess, blue ones. Now when he picks up a red one, it'll shoot a fire AOE at a random party member. That AOE needs to have its damage split. If he, when he picks up a blue one, he'll uh, he'll do just high damage to a single target. So when the, it's the red AOE, you stack up like that. When it's a blue one, you spread out. He'll usually jump to the nearest one next. That's just the order he likes to do it in. Now he's going to do it a second time. But that's where the strategies tend to vary. So we'll see what he at. Let's. Well, so our strategy is actually we already we already discussed it. So now on the second one he's gonna summon a giant green one, and on that one that's that one the chime of the mountain. That one we're gonna kill. If you don't kill it before it casts last song, it does a lot of damage. Some groups just choose to ignore it and burn the boss. Some groups choose to kill it. We killed it. It's the way safer way to do it. Especially in the duty finder, so that's just the way that we do it, and then we'll just kill him After that, it's no biggie. He's just gonna jump between them again And because there's not too much damage going out here, there's a lot of time the DPS as a healer or a tank Like he doesn't really need to be in defiance. It also really doesn't matter And we're good. Alright, let's see what kind of loot we got. Wood Skylancer's Helm, Wood Sky Weiss's Choker. And now there's just a few more enemies. This last part's pretty straightforward. Even if you were to do speed pulls, it's just a few extra enemies. There is there is a little special thing here at the end. Wow, I missed him with that stone skin. That kind of sucks. Okay. Alright. These enemies, nothing. Uh, now, if you do decide to pull the first four enemies all at once, uh, they do a lot of AOE, so it's really annoying. Just watch out for it. Say, they have breath attacks, they have AOE attacks. They, they're really just obnoxious, in all honesty. I can't wait till I get a size. I don't know what level I get a size. I had to get it at like 56 or 58, because at 60, I'm pretty sure I get. Well, I get arrow 3 next, I think, so can't be that one. Alright, should definitely be using this. The stones gets a lot of extra MP that I don't need to be using between pulls. I just prefer to do it. Realistically, what I do is I stone skin, and then as soon as that goes, I do the regen. That way I can, uh, that way I can get some... Worry free damage off. Same deal with these guys. They're just as annoying. They use so many AoEs. And he got hit by one too. So I'm gonna put an extra GCD on him. But he's got some defensive cooldowns up, so he shouldn't be taking too much damage. Ooh, I pulled aggro there for a second. Surprised. Now, as soon as you kill these two enemies, that rock over there is going to break open and one dragon's going to come out. He's not too threatening. Just kill him. Nothing crazy.
He's also automatically in combat, so... I'm gonna chill a little bit here with the MP. Actually, I don't really need to chill. There's no reason to. It's not like this, like I said, it's not like this guy does very much. He's got a regen, he's got his asylum. He's good. I love DPSing as White Mage in Heaven's Ward. It's so satisfying to get those stone threes off. After you kill him, this dragon's gonna come down, and those two dragons that flew away earlier are both gonna do their mechanics at once here. So basically, you're gonna have the fire and the ice dragon both shooting mechanics from above. It's it's still not a big deal. It's just a little bit annoying. Ideally, you kill this dragon before then. But uh, it's not mandatory by any means. You'll see, you'll get to see these ice pillars as they dissipate and these things spawn. Alright, then they're gonna come down. Stupid glacier sprites. And then the tank just gotta pick both of them up. And these guys are wounded. They do not have very high health. After you kill these guys, you're on to the last boss. There's a few extra loot chests before the last boss that you definitely want to grab, though. And they're they're not, like, out of the way or anything, so definitely recommend stopping to grab them. No point in dotting. He'll be dead so soon. Alright. On to the last boss we go. The last boss actually can kill people pretty easily if uh, they're not paying attention. He does a lot of tank damage as well. So I play it a little bit safe here, especially considering it's pretty easy to screw up. I'll definitely roll in those pants. And I don't need the book, so... Healer pants, though, I will definitely take. Alright, so here's the boss. Teoman. Still a pretty simple... Uh, pretty simple boss fight. So there's a lot of different ways to do it. I'll talk you through it. Very commonly, tank will tank him right in the middle of the room. The other thing is to bring him to the wall. Uh, either strategy works. It doesn't make too much of a difference, but it's a little bit more running if you bring him all the way to the wall. Chaos Blast is his one major attack. Basically what he'll do is he'll target it at one person, and he'll shoot an AoE at them, and then that from that AoE a bunch of Conal, uh, a line AoEs will shoot out of it. He'll also target everyone with an AoE following that. Comet is the one big mechanic that he has uh, until 50%. He puts comets on two people's heads. And basically, we're going to drop a comet in our location here in a few seconds. And then we have to basically move away from it. I just run towards the boss. It's usually the simplest thing to do. I avoided all the damage there. You don't have to avoid all the damage. As you can see, it's very far from lethal. Just gotta make sure I don't get hit by the Chaos Blasts. And then, I think it's at 50% he's gonna do his next mechanic. Yeah, 50%. I wasn't sure if it was 50 or 60. He'll probably do another Comet real quick. While he while Comets are being channeled, by the way, he can't actually... Uh, he doesn't actually use any major skills. We'll actually get him pretty far below 50% here, so this works. But as soon as it's gone, then he does. Now during this phase, he's got two wings. And he's going to spam comets on people that just do a lot of AoE damage. Now you can, he ha also has another attack that you'll see here in a few seconds that you can interrupt. So it's good to try and focus one wing at a time. So he does this attack right here, Dark Star. You can actually interrupt it by killing one of his wings before he does it. We didn't get it just in time, but it was pretty close. It's really just the melee who have an annoying time with this fight. Just because he's constantly dropping meteors on the melee. And then after this, he repeats the first phase, but he'll use Chaos Blast and he'll use Chaos Blast more often. So you just have to be a little bit careful. Like he's gonna do a breath attack here, and then he's gonna do a uh, And then he's gonna do a um, Chaos Blast. There you go. There 
There's another Chaos Blast. And then when he does Comet, he's also going to do it on three people instead of, uh... Instead of two. Which he'll do it on everyone except the main tank. Pretty much. Every time. Oh, and I'm still in Cleric Stance. Good job, Haps. Hey, it couldn't be the return of Healer Happy without one accidental Cleric Stance. It's actually, if people are fast enough, it's better to just all stack in one place. Just gotta make sure when you're running in, you don't run in front of the boss and get cleaved. That would be bad. We do have an LB2 also. And then he's gonna use Dark Star here, and it'll be over. Yep. Easy fight, easy life. Nice, easy dungeon. Nice, solid group. Bam. Just easy. Uh, let's see, we got the shield. What else? Pants, destroyer, shield. It's also a minion you can get from here. And uh, card. I'll give it to the Dragoon. Dragoon got hit by a few AoEs, but uh, damage was good, so. Alright, perfect. So I'm all done. Nice, easy recording. After that, you will be taken to my least favorite zone in the entire expansion. Not because the zone is bad. But because the Moogles are here. And I don't like the Moogles in this game. There's Moogle Beast Tribe quest coming too. Oh man. Let's go hand this in real quick. I can now fly in the last zone I think. I think that once I hand in this quest I've finished unlocking flying in the last zone too. Yep. There you go. Unlock flying in the Dravanian Forelands. Oh, too far away. I was like, what the hell? Alright, let's go into the Moogle headquarters. It's a good thing I was so far ahead of the main story, because I want to skip as many of these sides. I think I've been talking about that. It's been a while since I recorded one, but I think I was talking about that before. I wanted to be as far ahead of the main story as possible. In order to uh, in order to make sure I could skip the majority of side quests in the Churning Mists, it's it's rough. It's really rough. Uh, search for Moogles. Oh, that's just an etheric disturbance. I need to actually go to all three destinations. Estinian, come on now. You need you need me to come over and second this? Isail, you too. See no evidence. This guy flies down. Make me look like a fool. Alright, Alpha No. Where are they? Where'd they go, Alpha No? What did you do to them? Alright, I don't want to deal with you, Moglin. And then this quest wants us to go all the way back to Gridania. So anyway, guys, I'm going to wrap up this part. Thank you for joining me in another Final Fantasy XIV Let's Play part. Be sure to like, favorite, subscribe, and share. And perhaps I'll actually continue doing this series while we're waiting for the next patch to drop. Anyway, thank you again for joining us. I'll see you in the next video. And until then, take care.